score of the game will be the Eagles. This is a 25-yard field goal attempt for Jake Elliott. Ball is spotted, the kick is up. And the kick is good and the Eagles lead Super Bowl 52, three to nothing. Full space, he's back, he steps up, he is going deep. And it is quickly out to Jeffrey for a touchdown. Whoa, what a great catch by Alshon Jeffrey. A little play action, and after that big run, they immediately go up on top, and they get the big one to Alshon Jeffrey. He goes up over Eric Rowe, and he takes the football away. A lot of the snap is in place. The kick is a lot for the uprights, and the kick is no good. Again, so reliable on field goals, misses an extra point. And that is his second missed point after try of the postseason. This is a short field goal attempt, 26 yarder, low snap, they had trouble with it. So they saw the goal post. No good. They had trouble with the low snap. Goskowski line drives it and it was off the goal post. No good. So the Eagles give up nothing. Sound to Brady. Again to James White. Pitches it back to Danny Amadol. He throws a lot to Brady. Off oh. his hands. Incomplete. The Patriots pull out a play from the 2015 game against the Eagles. Amadol throwing it to Brady in the regular season. A couple of years ago, they connected for 36 yards. They could have had more right there on a pass incomplete. Good ball. He's got to catch that. winning, hoisting the Lombardi Trophy at the end of the game. Brady lines them up. He's back again. He steps up. He's hit. He stumbles. He is throwing it deep for the end zone, and it is batted of the Rose, and it's complete, and the game is over. The game is over. The Philadelphia Eagles are Super Bowl champions. Eagles fans everywhere. This is for you. Let the celebration begin. Wow. Fly, Eagles, fly. No more. No more will we have to hear Eli Manning, the only quarterback to beat Tom Brady. The Giants are the only team to beat Tom Brady and the Patriots. The Giants, Giants, Giants. Well, that's all gone. And I guess the Giants and the Redskins and the Cowboys, they're going to have to get new material. Their material will probably go now from, oh, well, you only have one. But the long-running joke of the Eagles being ringless 
That is no more. The Philadelphia Eagles have won Super Bowl 52. And they win their first NFL championship since 1960, but their first Super Bowl ever. And it's been rough for them. You've had, between the Redskins, the Giants, and the Cowboys, 12 Super Bowls in the Super Bowl era. And the Eagles have been the winningest franchise since the Super Bowl era not to win a Super Bowl. And that all ends tonight. As what a game we saw. And we had a score that was somewhat different. It was a little bit low scoring. And I find it funny that the last couple of years, folks, the defenses outside of a couple of plays, they haven't come to play at all. They really haven't. High-scoring games, high-scoring games, high-scoring games. And we saw it again tonight. And the Philadelphia Eagles, if you want to really think about it, they made one big play on defense. Yeah, they stopped the Pats on 4th and 5, but they made one signature play. And we always go through this mindset, defense wins championships. Well, it was an offensive struggle tonight, but it was a defensive play late. The strip sack and the fumble of Brady. And that was it. They set up another three points. And the Eagles went 41-33 to over the Pats. People want to talk about, in Philadelphia, is this Nick Foles' team. It's not. And you almost kind of feel for him. Because you know they're not bringing him back in Philly. And I doubt he wants to stay as a backup quarterback. He just won a Super Bowl. But the more that you hear out of the Philadelphia camp, this is Carson Wentz's team. And win or lose, this was going to be Carson Wentz's team, whether he won tonight, which he did, or whether the Eagles would have lost. This was his team. This was Wentz's team. Now, the Eagles can really get something great in value for him, and I find it fascinating that there are so many quarterback options and quarterback situations to look at in the offseason. And in the draft, it is fascinating. But that's a story for another segment. The Patriots, their use of timeouts, especially the one with 203 left, um, it was it was head scratching. It was really head scratching. Uh to go for it on fourth and five. That was a little puzzling as well. I know Belichick usually bring some rabbits out of his hat. Tonight they didn't work. And I'm sorry, but if you're Tom Brady, you got to catch that football. I mean, Amendola put it right there for you. You got to catch the football. And the Eagles, with some balls, I'll tell you right now, Doug Peterson, the dude's got some balls. He's got some onions. Double stack. To go for that play in that situation in the Super Bowl. And they executed it, and they executed it perfectly. And Foles ended up catching his football. And it made a huge difference. Kickers really didn't have a good night early. I mean, they settled in. I mean, you thought maybe they could have been a factor in the game. Uh, Eight-point game, they really weren't. Both teams missed. Field goal, extra point. Was missed. And I love the talk. Oh, what's it going to be for New England? Oh, my God. 
I look back at the Yankees' 2001 World Series loss to Arizona. And essentially, the dynasty ended that night. It died. They would go on to another World Series appearance in 03. They would get to two more ALCSs under Tory. But for the most part, 02 out in the first round. 05, 06, 07 out in the first round. And then 08, they missed the playoffs, setting up the Girardi era. But the Yankee dynasty died in Arizona in 01. And a lot of people are comparing that tonight with the Patriots. Did we see the end of the New England dynasty? You, know, you have Gronk out there in the postgame. He's thinking about retirement. There have been so many factors. What's going to happen with Belichick? What's going to happen with Brady? Bill's losing both coordinators again. Patricia leaving to go to Detroit. McDaniels leaving to go to Indy. The thing why the 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 reason why I don't think that the Philadelphia Eagles ended the Patriots dynasty tonight, and why I don't think the Patriots dynasty is dead. Who's in the A? Who is in the AFC? Really. It's not like the division got any better. And really, who's in the conference? I mean, Kansas City's going to be good. I mean, they they fleeced Washington. They have a young, up-and-coming rookie quarterback. L.A. caught fire at the end, but, uh, I mean, Jacksonville? I mean, it's very possible. It's very possible that we saw the end of the Patriots dynasty. Brady's not getting any younger. Belichick's not getting any younger. And that's fun. Gronk, I, well, I don't think he, he will retire. Gronk is hurt a lot. Gronk is hurt a lot. Do I think that the reign of AFC East division titles will end? No. No, that's not going to end for a long time. With the inept, poor excuse of teams that are in that division. They still got a shot for that. And they still have a shot to, to, to keep up going to Super Bowls, but... It is an interesting topic to talk about. Is this the Yankees in 01? Is it over? Me personally, it's one of those I gotta believe it when I see it. I gotta see it to believe it. I mean, we've counted them out so many times. And then we learn not to count them out. But tonight, the football gods, listen, there was no calls that went the Patriots' way. The ball didn't bounce their way. Let's face it. The Giants got lucky twice. Pete Carroll gave them a Super Bowl. The Eagles, the last time they met them in the Super Bowl, turned the ball over so many times. McNabb was giving them free passes after free passes, even though T.O. went off in the game. The Falcons choked last year. Not saying that to take anything away from them, but they've been the beneficiary of a lot of luck over the years. They didn't have any of that luck tonight. It was on the Eagles' side. And what an improbable story. And it begs the question also... What Super Bowl run is better? The Giants having to go through all those teams in 07? Or 
the Eagles winning this as underdogs in basically every game and with a backup quarterback. After they lost their MVP starting quarterback. No matter what way you go, it was an incredible run by Philadelphia. And it's a city that deserves a championship. Let's face it. It's been 10 years now since the Phillies won in 08. And they last got there in 09 and then that was it. The Sixers haven't done anything in a while. But the more and more I listen to Philly Sports Talk Radio and I see people from Philly on my timelines, Philadelphia is a good, passionate football town. They may act crazy, yeah, they boo Santa. Some of them are the nicest people in the world, but they are overall a passionate football city. They're a passionate football fan base. And it's good to see them win. And also, it it shuts up the Giant fans. Oh, my God. Eli Manning's the only quarterback to beat Tom Brady. Oh, the Giants are the only team to beat Tom Brady and the Patriots. Wrong. Not anymore. And it's the Eagles that do it. That is interesting, though, that the Patriots have lost three Super Bowls. The only three that they've lost, each to an NFC East team. The Giants twice and tonight the Eagles. Interesting. Really interesting. Where do the Pats go from here? Listen, I think they'll be fine. I think they'll be right there next year. I don't think they go this year from 13-3 and three and 8 points away, 9 points away from a Super Bowl to going 8-8, eight 9-7 eight, and seven next year. I, that's not happening. They'll compete. They'll win anywhere from 10 to 12 games. Just because that, listen, the Jets are two easy wins for them. The Dolphins, for the most part, are usually two easy wins for them. Buffalo always plays them tough. But no one's sweeping New England. So they'll split. So you got to figure a split against one of them and a sweep against two. That's 5-1 and one right there. So they're in good shape. How much of a factor was the hand? Malcolm Butler, why didn't he play? Early on, he wasn't playing, and it hurt. It hurt the Patriots. And what we heard on NBC and on the New England Patriots radio and Westwood One, that it was a coach's decision. Interesting. You know, we hear all these things. We've heard it all about New England over the last couple of weeks. But there's been a lot of tension. And I think really the worst thing for them was to lose tonight. But I think they'll get over it. It'll be interesting. As a Jets fan, yeah, I'm hoping that it's nothing but misery and and drama. But even if it is misery and drama, they'll pick themselves back up and they'll win the AFC East next year and they'll be in the playoffs again. When Tom Brady shows you consistently that his football skills are officially diminished and gone, and Bill Belichick just looks like he doesn't have any more zip on his fastball anymore as a head coach, then that's when it'll be over. But until then, yeah, we can speculate, but you can't count them out. But tonight... Philly, listen, they did a couple of things that were questionable. Uh, I know they missed the extra point. I wouldn't have gone for two. Just take a point. Take a 16-3 lead, take a point. And then when New England tied it and then took the lead on an extra point, I'm thinking it could be 33-33. But they ended up, they opted to go for the two-point version. They failed twice on the two-point conversion. I feel like in the Super Bowl, you got to get the points. Get a point. Get one point. You got a better shot at getting one point. 
than getting for two, usually. And it's the Super Bowl. Take the freaking point. But, ended up no harm, no foul. They win by eight. And the city of Philadelphia finally, finally can say they have a Super Bowl trophy. 